How you guys doing? Thanks for coming back. This is part seven of the Hammerhead Twister Rebuild. We're gonna focus on wiring and getting these brakes working. Once again, welcome back. Appreciate you guys watching. So now we're on part seven. Uh, I actually went and got a whiteboard. Actually, my brother, Dan IT guy, thank you, buddy, uh, brought me over a whiteboard so I can kind of keep track of where we're at so I don't end up with, uh, you know, something I forgot to do. So here is my to-do list, and I'm going to start on this this week. Hopefully, I can make some uh, good progress this week. The, the big one, wiring. Uh, I'll get into it, but that's going to take me a little while here. Hopefully, I can have it done in uh, a day or two. But it uh, looks like I may have to rewire most of this uh, due to the, uh, the kits that I purchased. The wiring kits do not match up. So I'll get into that more in a little bit. But we have uh, the brake pads. I got the right ones in. And then uh, we need to bleed the brakes out after I get those in. And then actually, let me show you real quick. I think I showed you before the, uh, the ones I originally purchased. Sorry, it's windy. These are the ones I originally purchased, obviously not the right ones. There we go. That's what I needed right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those installed into the back. Um, I'm gonna pull these seats. I have not installed them permanently yet, but um, I also got some neat little boots here. These are gonna go on the steering rack. Just tidy things up a little bit. And then I have a question for you guys. What do you think would be cool to do with these nifty, if I can get it unrolled, these nifty hammerhead stickers. So I had a couple ideas. Uh, I know they were originally intended to go on uh, the roll bar, kind of like that. But I had an idea of maybe taking off the hammerhead part and putting it down on that little panel and then taking the flames and maybe putting them here or back or anyway i got some ideas but uh was wondering if you guys wanted to chip in and let me know where you think i should put these stickers if i should put the full one with the flames or if i should cut them in half put the flame somewhere and the hammerhead somewhere else kind of want to make it unique i'm not looking for the stock deal here uh, as you guys know i just kind of do whatever i feel is, is cool looking at the time oh one other thing i did get in Look at that. Got a little hammerhead steering wheel cap. I love that thing. It, makes, it just makes it look a lot better and you know you're driving a hammerhead. But I'm gonna go ahead and let's finish, let's finish going through the list here, sorry. Um, I have to finish that, rever that rear motor mount. Uh, still just got my handy dandy speaker wire holding it up for now. Um, then I need to go through that tank and clean it. I need to make sure that the uh, valve on the bottom works, that everything is uh, up to snuff there, put a new filter in it, uh, make sure there's you know no rust, clean it out good. And then test and tune. Hopefully we can get it running after I get the fuel tank in and the wiring done. And then we're just gonna rip this thing. So before I start laying out all kinds of stuff, sorry for the zoom issues here. Let me see if I can get that better. Uh, before we start laying the wires out on the ground, this is a diagram I found on hammerheadperformance.com. Uh, you can click what type or what year you have and it will give you the, the wiring diagram in a PDF form. This is what I'll be using to go through wire by wire and get this bad boy wired up. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the wires and lay them out and I'll show you where we're at. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this PDF for the wiring diagram below in uh, the description. So go ahead and head down there and grab yourself a copy. So I have laid out the two wiring harnesses. So this is the old one over here. Uh, this one here, those go up to the lights and horns and uh, turn signals. Then that piece goes over to the dash. And then we come back. As you can see, it's got some mangle in the middle of it here. Come back to what used to be the connector. Right here. And it connects right there. Boom, and then Bob's your uncle, everything's hooked together. I actually do have an Uncle Bob, just so you know. And then we do have the new one. And it has some funky connectors here that aren't matching up with anything on the front end. It's got two wires there instead of the 
six or so for a headlights and horn. Uh, I got a random one in the middle there, and this is what they gave me for the dash, which doesn't line up, doesn't have the right connectors for the relays, turn signal relays. And as we go back, so once again, if you look at this one, random spot, there's no wires there, but there for some reason is here. There's one farther back, not there, there on the new one. And then as we get to the back here, my main issue that I have to redo is, if you look at this connector, this is a female. Here's the connector to the back harness, also a female. Uh, in my world, two females cannot uh, mate, should we say. So I have to figure out a way to rewire all of this to make it happy together and uh, make this work with the wiring that I have because I'm not sending it back and getting the same thing sent back to me. I did order it specifically for the Hammerhead 150. Uh, looking at it, it's too long for a moped. So I don't, I don't know if this was just a, a burn down version without you know, tail lights and turn signals or whatever, but we're going to go ahead and wire by wire. If we have to, we'll pull this thing apart and we will rebuild this to make it work with our hammerhead. So let's get into it. So it looks like we have three wires for our ignition. Now, this is the diagram for the 150. Let me look at my ignition and see how many wires we have on that to see if it matches. I have a sneaking suspicion. Oh, let's see. We have uh, one, two, three, four. We have four, and that one only has three. So there's something added on here that's not on there. The interesting thing is the ignition switch is just that. When you click it on, it completes the circuit or sends power to a relay. So that's basically the two things you need to worry about is having power and ground to this and then it's spreading out the power and ground out to any device that needs to be turned on or have power given to it. So that's just a simple concept of it. Now with the, with the actual starter itself, this button here is going to be our starter which pushes in and this will be connected to the battery and then over to the ignition starter relay. So when you push this button, so ground on one side and then the other side has to go to the ignition relay ignition relay to battery uh, that being said i'm gonna start digging into this and digging into that diagram a little more see if we can make some sense of this thing so if you have a bunch of different colored highlighters it would really help in this otherwise you can print uh, multiple copies of this diagram and just do one thing at a time is my suggestion uh, I've gone and highlighted all the parts that I need to make function for the ignition switch. And so, first thing I wanted to do is identify the connector and what wires I need on that connector. So I have yellow red, I have green white, orange, red, brown, blue white, or is blue or brown? Uh, da, 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 da blue green white actually this is brown white sorry green white blue white sky blue so I have to find the connector with those on it in my wonderfully new setup so that's the first thing I'm going to look for that's just the wires that go into the connector if I can find those because on the other side that's what they're come out as so I need to find those so I can connect all this stuff here over to my ignition and get everything connected where it's supposed to go to the CDI box and the starter relay. So that's what I'm gonna start looking at right now. Just wanted to say easier way to look at this diagram instead of getting overwhelmed is to highlight it. And if you see a black dot where it crosses a line, that means that they're connected. So a lot of the grounds, like the ground up here, you'll see a black dot that's connected to this ground wire, which if you look, it's connected there it's connected there, connected there, connected there. So there's going to be one wire with a whole bunch of stuff connected to it because it's basically a ground bus without having a ground bus, which means a bar with all the grounds on it and one lead going to negative or frame ground. So, all right, I'm going to jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the yellow red 
from the ignition switch all the way back over to the ignition relay, starter relay. So what I'm gonna do is find it here. This has the wrong end on it, but it's the correct wire. So this wire I know, I know goes to the ignition switch and that runs all the way down to here. I have cut the connectors off because we have to play match the wires. So I went ahead and cut, stripped, and got these put together with some connectors. And then before I did that, I followed it all the way up the chain here to my starter relay. And you can see right there, that's where it ends. And you can see it right here. So I know that I have that one correct. Now when it comes to my ignition, I am going to have to get the pin out for this style ignition switch and find out what color they are making the yellow red, which I believe is going to be red, but I could be mistaken. I will get the pin out and as I get this connected, I will show you. I was able to find the four wire key switch diagram. So if we look at key switch, there's a black wire, black, white, red, and green. And this shows exactly where they go. So uh, I hope this helps out. I know z -Lock has been waiting for me to help him with the ignition. This di wiring diagram here should be a huge help. Uh, I'm going to use this to try and get the uh, rest of my stuff put back together here uh, with my fun wiring mess. So anyway, just wanted to share this with you guys. I can leave a link in the description below. All right, so I've got the key switch, ignition key switch here, wired up. Uh, black goes to our uh, emergency kill switch. Got that connected here. Black, black with white stripe to black with white stripe. Green, green is our ground. Red goes to power. And then black is for the uh, starter button. So this will run over to our starter button, which is funny because they're running it through here and then back up into the starter button, but you could just go straight from here to the starter button. But uh, yeah, there's the ignition. And then I went ahead and finished up connecting the dots here. And you will see that as I found wires that this one here is for the rear turn signal, uh, rear left turn signal. Now, this does not, there's not another wire back here for turn signals. So I'm going to have to wire the left and right turn signals from here back to the turn signals. Not a big deal, just a ground and then that. Um, not an issue. Uh, the rest of these will actually go to either relays or uh, the CDI box. And I don't know why they put these on the end of it for the CDI box, but I'm going to have to change connectors because I can't connect them that, that way. So we're making progress. I uh, just wanted to give you a little update. I know that z -Lock was looking for information on this. I hope this helps out along with that. Let me show you once again, just in case you missed it. This is the diagram I'm using for the ignition switch right here. Go ahead and pause it, take a picture, screenshot, whatever you need. But that's what I'm using. So, all right, I'm going to keep moving along here. Okay, so I did make one switch. I went ahead and hooked the black. All right, so here is your ignition button, what I'm using as the ignition button right here. And one side is going to go to your yellow red, which yellow red goes to the ignition solenoid. And then the other side, black, is going to run from your switch. So when you turn this on, it will give this power, that will give this button power. When you push this button, it will send the power down to your solenoid, which kicks on the, or the relay, and that relay will kick on your starter motor. When you push the button, and yes, that is how it sounds. Just a quick note, uh, I know, I'm sure there's some people going, well, he's hooking this up to the stop switch. I know this is emergency stop, 
I'm going to actually make this the starter button. You want to stop? Turn the key off. The key that I'm using does not have a starter side. It does, it's on or off. So I'm going to use this as power to everything is on. Start your machine. When you're driving, you're done. Just like a car, you shut it off. Uh, once I have it wired up and working, I'll show you how that uh, how well it works or if it works. But that's what I'm attempting to do because um, when you can shut this off like a car, it makes more sense to me than having the emergency stop. So anyway, just wanted to explain that so the guys who are looking at it going, dude, you're hooking it up to the uh, emergency stop, which it could be start stop as well if I want to, but uh, just going to have it where it's just like a car. Quick update. I went to try that uh, button and the button was broken. So I ran to AutoZone and got this cool little uh, engine start button. I figured that'd uh, spark it off a little bit, and you know what button starts the motor for sure. <laughs> All right, I have it crudely hooked to power, so let's go ahead and uh, test this out. See if we get yeah, about that. Now, if I turn the key off, the key is off. Nothing. Turn the key on. Bam! All right, our little button's working. That's going to be sweet. Hey guys, so I'm still troubleshooting. So I am trying to get this, I got the headlights to work, I got the horn to work, I got all kinds of stuff to work, but the, uh, the switch is kind of slow here, but there we go. We got that working. The horn kind of a little dead, but <laughs> horn kind of makes some noise. And then if we turn this on, I have the test light set up back here. So when I push this button, it should make the engine go rear, rear, rear. So I have that on the test light right now. If I take this, pull it off, put it on my starter solenoid wire right here. Let me get this put together. Sorry, guys. And yes, I kind of have things just set in place tied together which is that's the ground running straight to the negative terminal so I have power coming from that I have the negative running uh, to the ground right there which goes down to the battery so now when I push that button it should activate that solenoid and we should have rare 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 but we got nothing so I'm going to have to test the starter to see if we got a bad starter on this thing. Okay, I put the old starter relay in there. Uh, bench tested it, it does work. Uh, now I got it hooked back up to my button up front. Let's see if we got any juice. And yes, I just have this stuff sprawled out, but... Ha 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 ha! Bad starter relay. Boom! All right, now I can actually button up this cluster, get that uh, carburetor mounted on there, and get that hooked up. I will clean up the temporary stuff. As you can see, that's a big mess. But now I have lights, horn, and ignition. I won't have turn signals until my new turn signal rela or turn signal switch came in or comes in. The other one was frozen in the middle, and it's plastic, so the tip but just broke off. But um, yeah, that was fun. Alrighty, I'm going to end part seven here and we're going to get this thing running here soon. I went ahead and ordered the new reverse box. I didn't have a choice. I couldn't find one. So I'm going to get that in. I have to do the rear mount. I'm going to do the exhaust and we'll just keep plugging away on this thing. Part eight should be a whole lot better because I'm not sitting here playing around with wiring for almost three days now, but I appreciate your support. I thank you guys so much. Uh, it means a lot to me that you guys take your time out of your day to watch this goofy guy build goofy stuff. But I hope it helps. I put a lot of information down below. So please check out the description. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I love talking to you guys. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, have yourself a great day. Thank you.